Hello, and welcome back to the Happy Martian Dragon Hammer cast. Um, this is Ock Hammer, or Andy, sitting in with Sam today on Mr. Cooperation. Hi. So, it looks like uh, today we've got some uh, games from, looks like a couple Fridays ago. Uh, this is one we're following uh, Chase, Mr. Drake himself, uh, and see how he does. So, uh, I guess we should just jump right in. Yeah, we'll hop right into it here. And uh, first game of the night, uh, I think he was playing against you. Yes, yes, it was. It was. Uh, uh, like I said, it's it's one of those things where the odds of us getting matched up again are just astronomical, and it just seems to happen over and over again. Camera loves you, Andy. I'll leave <laughs> you alone. So uh, Chase is sitting uh, on his deck here. His deck, I believe, has got. Looks like six chains to start with. Yep, I'm seeing him starting with six. And uh, you'll see right off the bat, he uh, he's dropping chains on his mulligan. I think that this was right before um, Brad went and corrected that misapprehension. Uh, my understanding now is that you would not drop chains on a mulligan. Um, well, you would still drop them on that first turn if you were missing cards as a result of a mulligan, though. All right, and so the deck I'm playing uh, is the, what do we call it, the Sovieski Pensville Soothsayer. It's a uh, very odd, strange deck, and I just brought it to uh, try to mess with players. I didn't really expect to win at all, so <laughs> the night kind of yeah. goes that way for me. <laughs> it, uh, it sounds like a, a fun deck with some good tricks in it. Holding that Chuff Ape right there on turn one. And never unhappy to see that guy come right down. 11 power, turn one, uh, and immediately challenging his Sanctum guys. And Chase runs something here with, I think, some pretty heavy Sanctum and Brabnar board presence and a lot of Amber control. So we'll look for these games to go a little bit longer tonight. Um... And you maybe with your deck with that rapid amber generation in your sanctum with all that raw amber in your untamed with your hunting witch and your key cheating um, may have a, a way around some of his tricks here yeah so uh, let's see his name I just got it was EI Melanta of the billowing turret so yeah it's it's very Shadows, you know, you got your tricks in there with shadows. You got your your big creatures with both Brobnar and Sanctum. It gets a little crazy. Let's see. And this is one thing that this deck does a lot is just burn a bunch of cards for Amber. Yeah, sometimes you find yourself in that tension of wondering, do I build my board or do I use my board? You're right there going with plan C, which is get these cards out of my hand. <laughs> They're not helping me. Yep. And of course with those two, with that chuff ape there, you don't really have to worry about building your board right away. <laughs> your things are safe. Uh, Chase bringing out his bump suit to have me drop one and then immediately <laughs> angers him into chuff ape. <laughs> He's trying to get rid of that that massive threat. Yep. Peeking into Chase's hand, we can see he's holding on to that bait and switch over there on the left. Each turn so far, he's interacting with your amber. Well, he's uh, he's slowly been able to build his own over there. So he's looking for that classic bait and switch turn, right? I'm gonna forge a key for six so that I have none left, and then I'm gonna slam into you. And did you uh, did you miss your reap with the chuff ape there before uh, he, the abduction? He was stunned. So he was still stunned. Yeah, he gotcha. was still stunned. So gotcha. I just brought him back into my hand so that I could get the damage off of him and keep him out there for a little bit longer. Sure. And the Mar is certainly looking to be the uh, the workhorse of this deck. A lot of pop out of the sanctum with your uh, your raw amber. 
um, the key cheating, obviously, that comes out of your untamed in this with the hunting witch, the full moon, and also the key charge, really giving you opportunities to get around some of Chase's amber control. But uh, it looks like the Martians are the ones who are going to be doing most of your work when push comes to shove down the stretch in this one. And he takes Chuff Ape down, but he, I mean, he threw a Bumpsy uh, Frankus, which is always good to have on the table, and uh, a Raiding Knight. So, I mean, there you go. I got rid of three of his creatures um, just by throwing that Chuff Ape out there. Yeah. And Cleverly is going to dodge the threat of that Mind Warper as he takes his own guys off the board. Yep. You're doing a great job going exactly to six. Against a deck that's got some uh, some ways to punish you for going big, playing right around that six amber mark, you're gonna force him to use his uh, his small removal, and amber control, like the whispers, like the bumpsy. Right. Chase going up to eight over here, saying, "Hey, do you have that doorstep to heaven?" And sure enough, it's in my hand for sure. Getting no amber off of it yourself. But you've got the raw amber in that thing. So that each time you hit that, wow, and it doesn't come out. No, uh, no take hostages. Yeah, no, that's... And here's another thing that uh, is very, very deadly in, in his deck is that, uh, that banner of battle. Throwing just that one additional on everything is just so brutal. Yep, that troll coming in at 9 power. And this is also another big aspect of his deck is the uh, um, the couple. I think he's got a couple smashes in there to kind of slow down your creatures. And he's got these grenade squibs, or snibs. Jeez, never, never get that right. But uh, those grenade snibs always cause havoc. And there's yep. my... There's my uh, fun piece of the deck is the reverse time maverick in uh, in the Mars. So it's it's a, like I said, this is a very fun deck to play. Like it's not super competitive, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you don't see that coming. And after he's just wiped out your hunting witch, your dust pixie, and a couple of Martians, including the chuff ape, you've got a uh, a stacked pile right there. Yep, and there's a there's a doorstep in there, so that I can try to keep him off for another another turn or so. And uh, this deck in in this game kind of did what it's supposed to do. It's really kind of supposed to make your opponent think about their options and what they do. He's getting rid of my mind warpers because he does definitely doesn't want those out. Yep. Yeah, and the uh, the grenade snib maybe backfiring a little bit off that banner of battle fails to uh, to go off with that extra three power. There you go, war drummer to to clear off some of the damage, and now he can bring his smash back out to stun something else. It's And you're really going to pick your poison against this particular Bravnar lineup. Is that War Drummer going to hit his smash and stun you a couple of times? Or is it going to hit those bumpsies? Make sure that you're losing an additional 3 to 4 amber over the course of the game. Using that as a really effective control tool. That little 3 power creature. And with the Banner of Battle on the board, that uh, War Drummer coming in with 4 power. It's not nothing. It's something to deal with. But you do make your key. You deny him the opportunity to, uh, to hit that bait and switch turn that he had been looking for. Yep. He's still over there, still on 5 Amber. And in Chase's position now, 
you know that in that thin deck, you've likely picked up that doorstep again. So are you going to go big again? Or are you going to go all the way up? Here he goes to 10 amber now, saying, I hope that doorstep is in one of the three cards that you haven't drawn out of that that reverse-timed discard pile so far. And uh, sure enough. <laughs> there it is. There it is. You know, and then with the fact that uh, Jammer Pack's out there, <coughs> I'm forcing him to go up a little higher than he really wants to, to forge those keys. Certainly. And in Key Forge, often, um, you won't find great opportunities to play around your opponent's threats or your opponent's tools, but rather, you'll generate value by giving them suboptimal chances to play them. Right? Yep. Here's you with very little amber on the table with an opportunity to kill some grenade squibs where they may not even fire. Right? So, you're not playing around them. They're probably still going to get value as four power creatures with that banner of battle. Three. But they're the snips are three, three. Yeah, three power. You're right. That's right. Um, but less value than they might have gotten otherwise. Chase, conversely, played right into that doorstep knowing that it was likely to be there and just got walloped. And there we go, taking out that staunch knight with the jammer pack on it. And and I'll tell you, this is one thing that he does a lot with this deck, and it actually like is is a very strong move. Is that he uses his uh, snibs to um, actually reap a lot, so it forces you into saying, okay, I need to get rid of these, but it's going to be detrimental to me at one point or another. So. Because he's just, he, like, I mean, at his board right now, he can just sit there and reap for five every turn. Yeah, which is an almost unmanageable amount. Yep. And here we go, playing into that bait and switch. We see the chase is going to be left after he forges this key with only two or three amber. You're going to be up, and it looks like maybe nine, ten. Mm. Yeah, I should have ran that into a, a, a snib. Yep. <laughs> of course, going up to 10, as you did, with him having 3 left, that bait and switch is still going to leave you with 6 amber. <laughs> so another way that you can often play around that bait and switch, don't keep yourself low, just go high enough. Yep. <laughs> and there's that bait and switch. I knew it was yep. coming. I didn't really want to burst up as much as I did, but it just kind of happened. Yeah, and I can't tell exactly how much you have over there. It looks like if right. Chase has got seven, you must have six. Yeah, I was going to say, I believe it's six. There you go, I kind of spread it out. There you go, it's, it's six. Yep. So, not the worst um, time to get hit by that bait and switch. Yeah, you're setting Chase up for a key, but you have an opportunity to respond to it. And, of course, he's setting you up for a key. Even using that huge power of the bait and switch, not enough to uh, to get you off of that 6 amber. And as you look at forging a key for exactly 6, a great opportunity to kill these grenades. And see, I'm pretty sure I made a mistake here. I probably should have gone after those snips because I don't have any amber. But I don't think I do. I... Yeah, and as we look through your hand, we see some of those um, less functional um, sanctum cards. Three raw amber. No benefit to the board. Staunch Knight comes back down, not doing much. However, had you gone with Mars, you kill a grenade snip. You put three damage, two damage on that tunk of yours. Yep. And, and then you heal him up with a chuff ape. Yep, exactly. Uh, also not a powerful turn. You're still watching Chase. Forge his second key and likely reap up to uh, up to six again. Knowing that you're not moving a lot of cards out of your hand. And you may not have an opportunity to answer that on the following turn. So certainly a gamble. An opportunity to take away a resource from him. 
uh, and betting on the opportunity to come back on your next turn um, and control him then. Yeah. Moving those four Sanctum cards out of your hand, more likely that you're going to find the tool that you need to manage his six Amber. Though it looks like you have not found that here. No, I don't believe so. Yeah, and see, and I had that, I think I have a key abduction in my hand as well. So I really should have gone to Mars' turn last time, taking care of one of his snips. It got me anyway. Throw that Chuff Ape out there, bring him back. I mean, it's, I don't know. It, it was a, a decision oh, sure. that I made that I, I'm not 100% sure it was great. And well, we'll see some value off of your staunch knight here as it's yep. able to deny chase the key for one more turn. <laughs> I can hear you in the background eh? thinking to yourself about taking out the grenade sniv now. Yep. And difficult to find opportunities to take those out for you during this game. Chase has done an excellent job of controlling the board. And of course, when, when you do play reverse time, you limit the number of creatures that you're able to, to access over the course of a game. Yeah, that's the one thing I've also found with this reverse time is that it's, um, it's hard to say, hey, when do I do this? Because, you know, it's do, I know I only have a certain amount of cards, X amount of cards that I've played already that I'm going to be able to play with again. Is it really going to make it worth it? And and a uh, a fun card every time it hits the table. Oh, it's it's great. And and I looks like I drew back. Yeah, I drew back into it after the shuffle. So I mean, it came right back out. Yep. But knowing whether or not it's the time to do that, never quite as simple as it seems no. with reverse time. And I think uh, a problem of mine is that I have a tendency to slam it. No matter what, because it is so much fun. Yeah, exactly. And it, this is one of those. Um, that's why I, when I play this deck, I actually play with my discard kind of spread out like I have, so that I know what I'm getting myself into when it's when it's a reverse time opportunity. Yep, a uh, a habit we'll see from a lot of uh, a lot of MTG players that spread out discard pile. Uh, a useful way to play, knowing what's there. Um, not having to look through it, giving away that maybe you're holding an Arise, that maybe you're holding a, um, a Mimicry, and that's it. No way to manage the uh, the 6 Amber and the plan of controlling your Amber while consistently reaping with Ravnar uh, gets in there in the end. Yeah, and, and I had no opportunity to mess with his Amber that last turn, so I just kind of played it out, got as much Amber as I could, and we called it there, so... It... He definitely got his third key. First victory of the night. Um, my first loss of the night. And that sends me down to the, uh, the low tables to, I believe, my next turn, or my next game. I actually get to uh, do what Chase usually does and smash a child. So... <laughs> <laughs> down to the kids' table. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that that's uh, game one there. Uh, Chase victory. Like I said, he goes 1-0 uh, and o currently. And, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll follow him through the, through the night. We'll... Um... We'll jump right into his second game here. And um, let me just uh, again, yeah. let me, I'm gonna say let me just close this one out. We're gonna move on. <laughs> 